I mean, if for nothing else, if you just saw the did not see their head, their top, and just saw like, you know, midway bottom down, they're standing somewhere and you can't see the rest of them, but you see their clothing, you know that, oh, that's an Indian, you know? Um, so their dress, their dress, you know, kind of sets them apart. And Yah gives instructions that sets his people apart in that way. But, but to be set apart outwardly and not to have any change inwardly is worthless. Okay, so I don't mind wearing tassels, but I refuse to buy any from anybody who teaches that you must wear them or you're not in covenant because that's false. Okay, I refuse to buy any and we could go to the book of Acts chapter 21 and Paul deals with this matter. Okay, um, maybe later on we'll go there, but um, again, it's nothing wrong with wearing them. Just don't begin to get into competition as far as uh, whose is longer and who is more set apart and all this other stuff because then it becomes hypocrisy. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with wearing them. There's nothing wrong with 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 not with wearing um, uh, garments that are not mixed. Okay, not blended. Okay, um, it's for our benefit. Okay. Um, but it not only is it for our benefit, but it sets us apart in a physical sense also. Okay, it sets us apart in a physical sense also. So you have people of the world who don't have a problem with putting on certain dress that sets them apart. You know, um, so as people of Yah, He has given us a dress code that is, we should, we should wear them. But don't think that it's going to save you. Because it's not. Okay, um, true change begins on the inside, and ultimately it'll manifest outside. Okay, so I would wear tassels, but I refuse to buy it from any person who teaches that you must wear them. And every every person that I've seen so far that's uh, selling them or offering to send them to you, um, they. Um, they're teaching that you must wear them. And, you know, the way I look at that is it's just a gimmick. It's no different than what some pastors are doing in the church, trying to fleece people, talk you into sending you their money. I see it as for profit. That's how I interpret that. Okay. Yes. Certainly. Um... I think that the dietary laws and the dress code is to our physical benefit. I don't think it is to do with spirituality. Absolutely. We are body, soul, and spirit. I I believe that Yah gave us instructions to maintain all three parts. Now, um, I what I will uh, say um, uh, concerning... Uh, the teaching on soul a coat um, and I've done a study and I placed it on on YouTube about that um, the body soul and spirit thing the three part really is um, more along the lines of something we gain we kind of picked up in Christianity the scriptures teaches is that the complete man is a soul okay uh, Yahuwah, Lahim, four men of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostril. Man became a living soul. So the soul is the complete being. However, we do have in us the Nasham of Yah, and we have the flesh, okay, and um, the complete, the complete, the complete person is a soul, okay, and we have the Ruach of Yah. So we have in us the nasham, the ruach, and the flesh. Okay, uh, but it is the complete person that is the soul. Yes, body and soul is one and same, one and the same. Absolutely, that's 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 what we find in the scriptures. Yes, but fabrics and wrong foods will hurt our body, while some other breaking of commands will hurt our minds. Absolutely. And other breakings will hurt us. Yes, certainly, certainly, spiritually. Absolutely, Akot. Absolutely. And that is why, um, you know, uh, even with Zitzit, now it, has, it had a purpose, okay? But I don't have a problem with wearing it. 
I do have a problem with any who teach that you must wear it to be in covenant because it goes contrary to the scriptures. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So, oh, so I was, uh, one of the things I started saying was, you know, uh, everything in Torah is prophetic. Now, um, we're talking about the labor, and this is the context of this word forever, them washing. So the labor was prophetic, and it is prophetic of a physical cleansing, meaning immersion in water represents, which is a picture of what happens to us spiritually. Okay? All right? We're dying to the flesh. We're putting to death the flesh. We're cleansing ourselves. Okay? And we're being resurrected to life in Yahusha. Okay? Um, so, uh, even the labor, the labor is prophetic also. So, here in um, Shamut, in Exodus chapter 30, Yahuwah told Masha to make this labor. And, you know, the labor is made... Again, here is another thing. We're going to talk about the labor for a minute. This is not our study, but, let, but let's talk about it for a minute. You see, the labor, because it has everything to do with what we're talking about too, because we're talking about hypocrisy and everything else that goes along with it. Let me stop and go back and miss a couple comments. When we mention the word forever and throughout all generations, how does that apply to Yasharal not wearing mixed fabrics in their garments? men not cutting the corners of their beards, etc. Um, forever in that context means forever. And that's something that Yah has set in place where you see contextually that it is not, it does not have a limit on it or a time limit on it. So that command still stands. We should not mar the corners of our beards. Um, and uh, concerning that, that is one command where obviously Yah gave it for um, the purpose of us looking set apart physically. And you know what's awesome about that? Um, today, today, uh, because we have been brought up in lies, because we have been brought up in lies, we have been told that uh, the Hebrew people are those people... The, uh, are those people we see in Israel okay that's what we have been told but you know what's awesome because because the Hebrews adhered at least the, at some point they were they adhered to these commands such as um, not marring the corners of their beards now when you look at a Jewish person a Jewish person is not a Hebrew person okay a Jew and a Hebrew is not the same. And we've talked about that before. Uh, but, and if anybody don't understand that and want me to clarify, please, you know, say something. But I, I'm not going to dwell on it. Um, but a Jew and a Hebrew is not the same. And what the Jews do is, they're, the way they figure they don't mar the corners of their beards is, they, they grow hair. They grow hair. Um, they grow, let, you know, the sides of their hair grow longer. And to them, that's not marring. Spiral curls. Yes, those spiral curls you see hanging down. But that's not what the scriptures teach. Okay? That's a twisting of the truth. Just as that thing is twisted, so is the truth twisted. Okay? <laughs> um, but you, we have been brought up with the lie that the, um, that the Hebrews are those people we see in Israel. But you know what's awesome? Because, because our people... Because our people um, uh, kept the commands of Yah concerning dress and concerning not ev even not marring the corners of their beard, there are, there are um, drawings today where even other nations, when they took the Hebrews captive, made carvings in walls that exist today in Iraq. And in Egypt and other places around the world, that is not shown to us, but they're there, okay? Where those carvings, because of the features, because of the clothing and because of the hair, those carvings shows you exactly who the Hebrews are, okay? It make them distinct from their captors, okay? So even with... Um, 
uh, when Yah gave the command not to mar the corners, you know, it sets us apart. And it's that set apartness that causes us when we look at these um, carvings that these people put in celebrating their victory over Yasharal um, because of Yasharal's evil, Yah allowed it. Um, it is because of these set apart features that we can look at them and recognize that these are the Hebrews, the real Hebrews. Okay? Um, uh, so, Yah, there are certain things that Yah gave. To make us physically distinct, okay. Uh, gift beautiful boy wrote. Yah also deals with people differently depending on their area of weakness. For example, my idol is makeup. He will ask me to get rid of it, but I can't go and force anyone to stop wearing makeup, or they will not be saved. Yes, certainly. And Yah deals with people at different times okay so <laughs> you know um we might be we might we might have overcome in a certain area right or you know we we we, we wrestled with a thing and now we 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 now it's not a struggle for us that we're not struggling in that area anymore uh, but we are struggling in another area there's uh, there are other truths that we have problems receiving but if we're not careful and this this goes right along with what I'm talking about the labor okay I'm glad that came up um, uh, so we're strong in this area and because we're strong in this area if we're not careful and if we're not behaving um, uh, righteously scripturally then we, because we are strong in an area, we could go and start beating everybody over the head. Line up, line up. You know, I did it. Why can't you? You know, that's the attitude that we can take on. And there is a reason why we take on that attitude. I'm going to discuss it in a second when we go back to the labor. Okay. Um, and all the while, not seeing that even though I've become victorious in this area. And why have you become victorious? It's because... You have, you've probably heard me say this before. Sanctification is twofold. Okay, you have, uh, you have um, immediate sanctification. That's where when Yah sets you apart, he, he sets you apart to Himself. Okay, that's initial sanctification. But then there is the process of sanctification. So after you've been set apart.